What it do y'all, it's your girl Makeup and Travel and for today's video I am bringing you guys a three looks, um, one palette and review on the Lick and Lash Playful palette. I quite literally just got this today in the mail and I had been like itching at the bit to get this and so I wanted to create a look today and this kind of jumped in line before some other things that I needed to finalize but it's okay it's okay yeah if you guys are interested in seeing two more looks I will do in my last look I will do swatches of this full palette and of course give you guys my overall opinion on the palette um and yeah if you guys are interested in seeing all of that stuff then just keep watching okay guys so um after doing this one eye Something told me I needed to record this and I needed to do three looks with this palette. So I am just going to kind of walk you guys through how I was able to get this look um, and then we'll see what other two looks I get to do. So first I went into, let's, let's see if I can find it. First I went into this shade right here which is called Hot Fuss. It's like a very vibrant, very light purple. And so I basically set my brow bone area with this color. If you don't like to go that high, then of course don't go that high. But I love bringing my eyeshadow all the way up to my brow area. And I'm using a really fluffy Royal Land Nickel brush. This is the large crease from their natural hair line. I can't remember what it's called. The one with the Omnia, the Omnia line with the natural hair and they now have a synthetic Omnia selection. Next, I went into Sweet Pea, which is another purple. It's another kind of vibrant purple, but darker. Um, and I went in it with my Eddie Funkhauser crease brush and I just went slightly under that area. Like I said, it's slightly darker than the color I put in before not extremely but on my eyes you can see it and actually when I put on this sweet pea color the hot fuss color actually looks pink um, I hope you guys can see let me zoom in I'll zoom in a little bit more and let's see if I can get this to focus a little bit better okay I think that's good now um, so yeah sweet pea is going in my crease and because both of these brushes are pretty big and my eyes are pretty small I kind of go back and forth just to blend these out but also to make sure that the pinkish color is not hiding too too much so that is that so now I've built up my top part of my crease pretty well um, next I went into the darkest shade that I'm going to use from this palette and it's going to be Mystic. It is this dark purple right here and we are going to put this baby predominantly on my outer V and I am using another Royal Land Nickel brush. I'll tell you guys what it is. In a second it's their medium crease brush from that same Omnia collection and I when I was doing my outer V I was predominantly like patting this into the crease or the outer V now I'm okay with just blending it out you can see that there is a lot of pigment in these palettes so do be aware and cautious of that if you cannot or if you're not used to working with a lot of pigment um, I love working with very pigmented shadows. I prefer it to be honest. Um, hence why I enjoy the subculture. So, yeah. Just work with this a little bit more just to blend out the very outer edges. And I love this huge mirror in this palette. It's helpful for me. <sighs> okay pretty pretty good 
Um, next, what I'm going to do is I have, as you can see, a matte green on my lid and I'm going to cut my lid. I'm trying out a new base today and it's the, it's the MAC, um, uh, paint pot and groundwork. So now that lid is cut and I used a Freedom lip brush to cut that. Now I'm going to go into one of my Sonia G brushes and this happens to be I think a worker brush no a builder this is my builder three and I am going to pick up life of lime this baby right here and stick that right on my lid is interesting this cut this side overall is working a little bit better with these shadows than my first eye did only thing I'm gonna do is take the smaller Royal Lane nickel crease brush that I had this dark purple on and just kind of blend in these two shades I'm gonna try not to do too much over blending because I think that is what got me in trouble before I think I like this. I like this a lot. Okie dokie. I'm going to go light in my waterline today. And this is a ColourPop um, gel color in Crybaby. Only God knows if they even still have this because ColourPop loves to discontinue things within, you know, a swiftness. But these are pretty decent. Um, it just kind of depends on what you're using for them for etc etc so I'm just gonna use an angled wing liner brush to get this in my waterline really quickly all right so that is done now what I'm gonna do is hopefully find <sighs> let me <laughs> I've reorganized my brushes lately so it's gonna take me forever to get used to this system let me find my um, liner brush from Elf. Okay, I have no idea where my liner brush from e.l.f. is, but I have this short shader from Sigma, and this is their E20. So I'm going to take Majestic, or Majestic, wow, I'm making up words at this point, Mystic, which is the darker purple, and just go as close as I can with this brush to my waterline what is this this is a morphe m562 and i am gonna go in with hot fuss yeah which was the first color that i used in my crease and i'm gonna blend that out really quickly and i'm also gonna connect it above like i always do and i just got pink randomly <laughs> so like I said I kind of just jabbed my under eye with that brush that I had the pink in so let me see if I can kind of clean that up a little bit who knows anywho I'm liking this I'm liking this a lot a lot a lot do I want a wing liner Hmm. No, I do not. So what I'm going to do is just put on some mascara really, really quickly. Um, oh, no, you know what? Let's do my inner corner highlight before I put on mascara so that when I come back, everything will be together. I just need a pencil brush. I want a nice pencil brush. Eddie Funkhauser. Okay, I'm going to take my Eddie Funkhauser pencil brush. And I looked in this Lick and Lash palette, and I don't really see any colors that I want to put in my inner corner so I'm not even gonna bother I'm just gonna go into my normal singles and this is gonna be as I typically reach for my touch of glam um, single and it's this one's gonna be spearmint and picking up a little bit of product I'm actually gonna tap it off today and 
then we're gonna dunk. Oh, you guys see that? And then, just to make things a little bit interesting, I'm gonna take that same brush and I'm gonna go into another shade which is called Glass Slipper, and that's also from Touch of Glam. And this has a little bit more of a pinky color, and I kind of want to create my own duochrome if I can. So I'm just going to kind of layer that one right on top. I have no idea if it worked, but you know, I feel like it worked. At the least, it lightened up my inner corner a little bit. And then I'm just going to use the fluffy part of this brush to just blend these together so all is well i am going to hop off camera like i said do my mascara and we'll be all set to show you guys my finished look so just give me one second Alrighty, guys so this is the finished look this is a little draggy for me not really but like it's pretty out there makeup. This is the finished look. I'm loving this look. I've gotten to the point now when I'm, I'm sitting here that like I need to find 10 different things to record so that I can showcase, <laughs> showcase this situation. Um, but yeah, I've talked enough. If you guys are interested in seeing look number two, then just keep watching. Alrighty guys, so I'm here to bring you look number two in this three look one palette. Um, I think what I'm going to do first is go into this shade right here, which is powder, and put that pretty high up. Um, I'm going to go back to kind of my normal technique and yeah. This shade does have a good amount of kickback. Um, which, like I've said, if you guys have watched any of my other tutorials, does not bother me. But in case it bothers you, there you go. But it is a really, really pretty sky blue. So I am thoroughly enjoying this shade right now. I'm using the Eddie Funkhauser. I believe this is their large crease brush. Alright. And just to narrow down my focus I'm gonna switch into my Royal and Land Nickel Crease BMD 430 brush and I'm gonna go into this shade right here which is pistachio it's not as bright as the life of lime color but it's a pretty light bright green and I'm just gonna put that slightly under I'm hoping that it'll show up right there I'm thinking yeah I'm gonna have to kind of like pack this on and it'll blend itself out but there's another fluffy brush this is a Chikuhoto GSN 10 I really enjoy this brush for the um, shape and I think what I'm gonna do is go into Envy Envy is let's get this on camera Envy is this color at the end of my brush it's like a greenish teal situation and that is going to go even lower in my crease I might be able to get I'm not going to get away with it with this brush I need to use a smaller brush so what is this this is a pinched brush this is a coastal sense br250 I'm just going to go back into that envy color just with a more pinched brush which will help to localize the color and blend it out at the same time now I, ha I have basically lost a pistachio color um but i will go back to get that back into my look so no worries on that hmm, hmm, hmm. it's not working out exactly as i thought it would not exactly so we're gonna go in yet again with the even curses <laughs> so let's go in with the even darker color I'm gonna use a Sonya G crease pro and I'm gonna go into dragon dragon is a pretty deep green it's the honestly the most deep true green that they have in here so I'm gonna go in there 
I'm just trying to create more depth and I'm feeling like there's not really any depth in this look. At least in person it's looking very one note. Well, this has definitely turned into a more green look than I was expecting. As always, we're just going to keep going and hope for the best. Okay, so I have two other shades that I'm like dying to use in conjunction. Actually, three now that I think about it. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually cut my lid. Okay, it took a little while for me to do that. Um, if you didn't know, this eye is actually a different shape than this eye. So this eyelid overall, I have to cut it higher. So... I always have to go back and fix those up but now that we are here what I am going to do is take that Coastal Sense blending brush that I used earlier and I am going to deepen out my outer V. I'm going to first go into that dragon shade which is the darkest green that I put in my crease. Okay, so I just went into the dragon shade to just blend out the concealer to my crease. I think what I'm going to do now is go into Cosmic Dust, which appears to be like a blackened or a darkened blue. So I'm just going to go into that. Originally, I had some blue in this look, not some more, but we'll see what this does. Definitely does deepen it out. Oh, Rossi. And now I'm actually thinking about doing a decent amount of um, matte shadows on my lid. I know, shocker, but I'm just kind of in a matte mood today. Um, and there's three matte bright colors that are screaming out to me. I really hope they do not disappoint because otherwise I'm going to be highly annoyed. But first, what I'm going to do is put this shade right here, Flamingo, on my outer lid. Okay, and then my inner lid, what I want to do is put peached which is a one of the brightest peachy orangey tones in this palette so I'm gonna put that baby on my inner lid uh oh okay I'm gonna mix that with tang tangtastic which is like a brighter version see see okay I think that as good as it's going to get inner corner I'm just gonna use this same brush because I'm doing yet another matte and I just can't get enough of lime shades so I'm actually gonna take the life of lime shade that I did use in my look yesterday and put that in my inner corner mm. okay what I'm gonna do because I want that to pop just a little bit more. Let's just go ahead and take some er, primer. And I'm just going to take my primer brush and just blend that out really quickly. This together. Yes. Okay. There we go. Now it really is popping. Okay. Now I'm going to clean off my brush really quickly and try and get a better beginner to my lid mm. next let me find my elf brush again oh yes yes I kept it in the front okay so here's my elf brush 
I need a waterline. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do, oh no, I'm not gonna do black. Why go boring? Let's find a colorful waterline shade. Give me one second. Alrighty, so I found what I wanted to put in my waterline and I just went ahead and did it because it's a little bit of a struggle using this product for me. And I used um, the Silva Beauty uh, Hydro Liner in Lustic Lilac. Um, my eyes are a little cloudy, so don't mind me if I'm blinking obscene amount of times. But it's just a really light purple lilac color. Um, it is water activated, hence why you saw a little bit of liquid moving around in the product just now. Like I said, my eyes are a little cloudy um, from putting that product in my waterline, but we're going to keep pushing on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is use, as weird as it sounds, I'm going to use Cosmic to uh go right under that what should i do <laughs> uh let's try sweet cakes sweet cakes sweet cheeks my bizzles it's this shade right here it's like another it's like a pinkier green situation so like i said i was not happy with my outer v situation and i truly am not i feel like the shadow the cosmic dust that I put on there is no longer there so I have a little bit of product on the back of my hand still from something god knows what so what I'm gonna do is take that this is a Urban Decay primer by the way and I'm just gonna take that and put that right right in my outer V I'm gonna try my best not to mess up this look but I purely just want to deepen up my outer V going in with cosmic dust and I'm just attempting to just really deepen out this part of my look <laughs> okay guys so I feel like it all came together it did take a wee bit for it to come here but I'm feeling like a peacock situation going on i am loving how this look like i said came out i didn't really change anything on the eyes i just really deepened up that outer v with that color um cosmic dust so i really just deepened it out on top of the urban decay primer potion i think because i had so many shadows in my crease there was just really no primer to really grip that shadow so that's the whole situation on that i so apparently i don't have any black liquid liner who knew um and i don't have any gel liners or any cream products that are black that'll work and i don't have any mixing medium so i couldn't take a black to make a uh, wing liner I really did feel like this look could have used it but I feel like overall I feel like I'm bringing like my old colorful no hips don't no hips I'm bringing my old colorful I don't care type of vibes going on I even popped on a purple lipstick this is reminding me um the matte glam that I just finished panning in my from Milani in what last year's project pan or some point project pan so this is actually reminding me of that color which will probably make me go through this lipstick a lot more i'm loving the pairing that i did there everything else base wise is project pan i will have everything listed down below for you guys but yeah let me stop talking and just give you guys a close-up on this eye look Okay, I'm gonna zoom out and yeah I think that's all I have for you guys um I hope you guys enjoyed look number two look forward to my third look okay so first shade I'm gonna go into is peached which is right here I used this I want to say in the look yesterday well in my second look And just in case you're wondering, this is a Royal and Land Nickel um, brush. And this is called the Large Grease Brush from the Omnia collection, the Natural Hair Omnia collection.
Okay, so I was able to really get an I was able to get a really nice blended look that way. Now I want to bring in a little bit smaller of a brush to do a little bit more of a detailed crease. Um, and I'm going to try this. I don't think I've used this yet. This is a Hakuhodo J5533. And I'm going to go into Barbie, which is this bright pink. And that is going to be the next shade in my crease. Alright, and I'm loving how this is blowing out. I'm just going to go into that um, first brush just to blend it out just a little bit more. No extra product. Okay, and that is how that's looking. I'm really liking that so far. Next, I'm going to take an even more precise brush gotta find one first <laughs> here's one this is another royal and land nickel brush this is the small crease brush and i'm gonna take one of these darker purples i think i'm gonna take this one because it's slightly warmer than this one so i'm gonna go in with that one and that one's called sugar plum and i'm just gonna deepen out my crease with this color And just like I did before, I'm going to go into that previous brush, which is this Hakuhodo brush, just to blend the lines in between the two shades and just to allow the colors to blend a little bit better. Just make sure that the whole thing is even. Okay, I think that is beautiful. Now I'm gonna go off camera really quickly and cut my lid. I will be using my Urban Decay Primer Potion in the Eden, which is of course what I used for my base. So I'm just gonna cut my lids really quickly and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so both of my lids are cut um, and I have a, quite a few shimmers in this palette and I haven't used any of them. So I'm just gonna kind of be pretty adventurous when it comes to these shimmers. Um, just kind of want to see what's going on with them these are two of the more shimmers there is also a metallic which I just put on my pinky finger and then there is a matte with glitter 
come on focus you can do it babe there we go so these are the four shimmery tones in this palette um hmm I think I'm gonna work with these three on my lid and then potentially use the other two on my lower lash line so we're just gonna rub this in my hand because I don't know where my towels are and I think what I'm gonna do is literally go in the row that they are so one two wait one two three so the purple is called orchid what 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 did I just say the purple is called orchid and we're gonna put that in my inner third okay and then looks like I brought it over more nope I just have these cut in different shapes fun okay whatever next we're gonna go into Lagoon which is the more tealish shimmer Ooh, I just got a mad amount of fallout on my face so that's fun and while I put it on I'm just gonna kind of lightly tap over the previous shade to potentially get it to blend okay and then last color we're going to go into dollar on my lid And that's gonna be my outer outer lid color Okay, now I just wanna go back and just kind of blend in between all of these lid colors. Was I, have I been out of focus this whole time? Good things, good things. Well, that is my lid um, right there. And I know I have a little bit of the concealer exposed and I did that so that I could blend my crease and my lid together. So I'm gonna go into that sugar plum and just blend. in hopes that you get a pretty nice situation. out my outer V just a touch just a smidgey smidge smidge so I'm gonna go into my project pan palette just to get a black um, and this is something that you don't need this particular palette just get any black that you have or any really really dark shadow I just like I said I'm project panning this palette so any chance that I can get to use this color I do 
And this is just a really small pencil brush from Sigma. And I'm taking just a small amount of the black just to deepen out this outer V. I'm trying not to get the black to overpower the purple because that has happened in the past and I don't want that to happen. But you know, things happen. <laughs> okay. So I'm thinking that's a good, like I laid the product down. Now I'm gonna go into the purple brush and just blend this puppy out. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth between the two brushes until I am satisfied. Okay, are we, I feel like I went out of focus once again. I don't know, my camera's just playing me lately. Um, but I'm liking, I'm liking my lid. I'm liking it a lot. Now let's go for my lower lash line. And like I said, I think I'm gonna try and use a good, oh, I forgot a shimmer. I didn't even see this. <clears throat> this is Money Honey. I did not see this at all. So let us find my Eddie Funkhauser pencil brush I'm gonna take that pencil brush and I'm gonna go into money honey which is like a another greeny gold and we're gonna put that in my inner corner yes yes we are camera camera what is it with you today okay so that is that and then let's find my elf liner brush found it perfect and what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is take it I'm gonna wet it with my NYX dewy finishing situation Okay, and then I'm gonna go into Athena, which is the only true like metallic in this palette. And I'm just gonna put it right up against my lower lash line. Okay, so I was finally able to get the colors on my lower lash line. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have Athena, which is the metallic um, color in my inner lower lash. And then I have the blue, matte blue with glitter on my outer, outer lower lash. Um, I'm just going to kind of blend in between those shades with a clean uh, pencil brush. I'm able to get these to actually stick. I actually used my NYX glitter glue and now I realize what I've been doing wrong every time I use that glitter glue. I haven't been using enough. Um, so that's honestly the problem. But what I'm going to do now is blend out this lower lash line because it's it's a little much and I'm going to go into peached which was that first shade and just blend this baby out whoo child okay so I am back um I kind of went away kind of randomly um, basically what I did is I went and evened out my lower lash line. Like I said, once I was able to get the product on my lower lash line, it went pretty far down. Don't get me wrong. I like a pretty blown out lower lash line, but it was blown out. So I went and corrected that. Okay guys. So we going to make this a nice and quick and dirty review because your girl got Chipotle and boiled peanuts waiting for her right now. Sip. Oh, I love these clementine little Izzy things. Ooh, I don't even like like clementines, but I love this drink. Anyways, let's get to it. So, okay, this is the palette. You can't really see, but on the front, come on camera, it does say Lick and Lash Playful Palette. On the back, it has both the name of the palette, it has all of the ingredients, the weight, where it's made. So let's go through this. This does have mica, titanium dioxide, 
um, magnesium, ammonium, some dye, color dyes. It does have talc, mineral oil. So those are kind of the more alarming ingredients, if you will. This, the net weight is, the net weight is 2.8 grams each. So I'm assuming each um, shade. This is made in China, um, but it's distributed from Lick and Lash Beauty. This is cruelty free and they say this has a 36 month shelf life. Okay, now that was all on the sleeve of the palette. The exact same information and labeling is put on the actual palette. It has a ginormous mirror that I've already managed to crack at some point in time. Literally, it was not some point in time. It was literally today on my last look. I had this in my lap and I happened to have one of my arms resting on it while I was cutting my crease. And I heard a crunch crunch looked inside and the the mirror was cracked this is actually the first mirror that i've ever cracked surprise surprise so i'm gonna have to put tape on that so it doesn't actually go into the eyeshadows this is what the eyeshadows look like a beautiful arrangement of blues greens purples um pinks and a couple of orangey peaches situation going on in this palette you have one two three four five six you have six shimmer ish products so truly you have four shimmers one metallic and one matte with glitter um shadow everything else is a matte so that's two four six eight ten twelve 14, 18, 20, 22, 24. So that's 24 mattes, four shimmers, one metallic, and one matte with glitter. A very huge arrangement, and I love that the majority of these shadows are matte. As you can see, without my within my three looks, I used almost every shadow. I do want to say there might have been one or two I can think of. I didn't use plum or Frenchie, which Plum is right here and Frenchie is right here. I would have used it because that's a name of one of my favorite characters in Greece. Um, I also did not use Bora Bora, which is right there, but I used a color in each color family. Um, and I think that I was able to use both the lighter shades and the darker shades in each color family. I used all of the shimmers um, in this look today. Um, so yeah, I I feel as though I have a good sense of how I feel about this palette. So I like this palette. I really do. I love that this palette has so many different colors and that all of these colors are colors that I tend to reach for on an everyday basis. For me, these are my neutrals. I know that sounds crazy, but I reach, I love reaching for purples. Purple was one of the first um, eyeshadow colors that I ever brought into my collection. And blues and greens have just been a pretty quick tangent, um, tangential, neutral color for me that I tended to reach for at the very beginning of my makeup stage. Pinks I've been getting into more recently, um, so I'm very happy to have those. And it's always good to have some warm peachy oranges in a palette as well. I will say off the bat, just really random this because i purchased this palette i did not get either of the two latest certified palettes because i knew i wanted this one so in case you were wondering i don't have those so i can't really compare them color scheme wise um as for the formulation on these shadows the matte shadows are good they really are good there are some hits and misses in my opinion some shadows that you just cannot use like building up too much you really have to only use them blending out in your crease such as such um i was kind of disappointed in cosmic dust it did not really bring as much of a bang depth wise as i was truly expecting so i did go ahead and um reach into my Lorac pro 2 for my black when i used that in my look um i can't remember which 
shade it was i know pistachio is pretty it's actually in my opinion darker on the eye than it looks in the pan so that was a little um interesting because i remember using that in a look um same with power these lighter shades they look really light like they look like they'd be really good like crease colors but all of these shades in my opinion actually come on the skin a little bit deeper for example i have peached in my very optimum very upper crease and it's deeper in my opinion than it looks in this pan so just keep that in mind not a bad thing at all but just something to keep in mind i love love this life of lime color that is one of my favorite colors in this palette that's why i used it in so many looks two out of the three um and yeah i just i really really enjoyed the mattes in this palette as for the shimmers the shimmers uh, they're shimmers i'm not a huge shimmer person i love metallics i love glittery foiled um metallic shades that just glow in the moonlight um so for me those shimmers are just not kicking it um for today's look it was fine um but in my like typical looks i am probably not going to reach for these shimmers unless i can foil them or build them up to a lot better metallicness um so that is slightly disappointing this athena shade is very crumbly um i was trying to get it on my lower lash line i tried it with my elf uh liner brush which i tend to use all the time i could not get it on my lower lash line then i had to use a pencil brush and even then it was just it's very crumbly so that was disappointing as well and then title when you put it on your um eye so i have that on the outer v of my eye you can't see a drop not a drop of the glitter so not that i was expecting to to be honest but just disappointing um as for the shades being really close together i think the pictures were misleading i think that there is a good amount of diversity oh is that a there's a good amount of diversity in these um shadows that none can really be taken out i will say sugar plum and obsessed look very very similar they both look to be warm purples within the same color family the difference between the two are is a very 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 slight difference and even then sugar plum is a matte but obsessed is like a sheen satin so i didn't say that at the beginning my bizzles obsessed is definitely a satin i honestly did not notice that i didn't use that shadow um in any of these looks either um and now that i'm looking even closer it looks like orchid was a, sh a satin not a metallic or not a shimmer anyways um this this palette really does have a variety of formulations um when it comes to colors being too similar honestly i would say for me that would only hold water in these first two rows in this orangey type row and in this pinky row for the pinky row this shade which is barbie and flamingo those two look very similar in the pan i honestly did not use them together in the crease so i can't tell you um on the eye if they really build up together but what i can say is that i did enjoy both shadows so do i necessarily want to take both of them out no do i necessarily take one over the other no um as for these more um, orangey tones if you don't look at them in like a light they look similar um but if you have a light on them you can actually see the differences this one is a lot more peachy this one is a lot more vibrant orange and this one is like the split in between so for me i think that the pictures of this actual palette were very misleading for a lot of people because a lot of people skipped out on this palette because they thought that too many of the shades were similar i am going to bring the palette in so hopefully you guys can get a true sense of what this palette looks like but in my opinion it is beautiful um i would get this palette honestly again just for the mattes just for the mattes in the color scheme i would get this palette when it comes to the shimmers the satins the metallics the matte with glitter 
honestly those could be those could go away I'm not gonna lie and maybe just make this an all matte palette I would have loved that but I am still happy with this palette regardless can you guys see all the shades yes you can so hopefully this is pretty true to color and you guys can see everything um and that's kind of my whole kit and caboodle review i am gonna go row by row starting with this top row next row last set third row and then fourth row um so yeah let's just get into it the first shadow that we have here is peached and it is a peachy orange shade i think you get both peach and orange when you look at this shade next you have plum and honestly it is what it says it is a beautiful plum shade and now that i've swatched these two i think those two would be a beautiful color um a beautiful crease next you have what now i believe is to be a satin and it is called orchid why do i keep saying that weird orchid <laughs> and it's a beautiful purple um shadow it is what i have in my inner third of my lid and yeah next we have lagoon and this is like a tealy shimmer um and like i said it's a shimmer it's a very pretty color but it is a shimmer next you have dollar and this is a pretty unique color this is like a gold with a very heavy green undertone to it so it really works with these green tones in this palette and even the blue tones so it's a really very wanted and welcomed color in this palette next you have dragon which is a pretty true um green matte not an evergreen um you have those you have one closer to the end but very pretty palette nonetheless and last shadow in this row you have summer sky and it's a pretty pretty blue it is a dark blue and it does show up darker on your skin like i said all of the shadows pretty much in my opinion show darker on your skin just because of the pigmentation level um but yeah very pretty and i did not mention it before my bad these mattes are very pigmented and very blendable um so yeah next the shadow that i'm swatching right now is hot fuss it's like a pretty vibrant purple but it has a pinky undertone it's very pretty so yeah next we have barbie which is a very vibrant pink hence the name i think of barbie pink when i look at this shadow and there you go Ooh, chat my arm sugar plum sugar plum is one of the more warm deep purples that is there um this shadow you definitely do have to build up you guys saw that today when i used it in my outer beam and yeah you have to build this one up next is slaying and it's a pretty similar color the main difference is that it is cooler in undertone and this is yet another color that you definitely do have to build up um but yeah very very pretty color purples are hard to formulate so yeah envy envy is a very beautiful green matte and as you can see it's different than the other ones i don't have my glasses on so as far as i am from this viewfinder it makes it even harder for me to help you guys out two more shadows in this um a row we have pistachio which is a beautiful vibrant green not the lime green but it's a pretty vibrant green and then last in this row we have title which is the matte with glitter and like i said before you basically only get the matte shade you don't necessarily really get any of that glitter so these are the first two rows in the playful palette what I'm going to do is just switch over to my next arm 
just so that we get that going just threw off my watch don't mind my hand let's keep going tang tastic which is the more vibrant orange is the first color in the third row then we have frenchy which i honestly love that name because like i said it reminds me of greece and that is my favorite movie well i don't know if it's still my favorite movie but at one point it was my favorite movie next we have sweet pea which is a very pretty vibrant purple with a pink undertone um the difference between that and hot fuss which i want to say is this one right here is that this one is darker than hot fuss next we have mystic which is the darkest purple in this palette and they did not lack the pigmentation in that one next we have my favorite color in this entire palette and it is a life of lime i love this color i love it so much i love it so much <laughs> Next we have Bora Bora and this is a very very unique color um, and I really need to work with that color. It's like a navy blue but not really. I don't know how to explain it. Very unique color. Next we have Powder and this is my favorite color um, like in life not necessarily in this palette and um, it's a baby blue. Love that color. Last row we have Sweet Cheeks. And this is like a true salmony pink situation going on. Very pigmented, very beautiful. Then the last pink we have is Flamingo. Very pigmented, like I said, um, and very vibrant color. Next we have Obsessed. And this is another dark purple. Pretty. Then we have the only metallic in this palette, which is Athena. And you can see the chunks at the very beginning of the shadow, but it does smooth out nice. Um, so that's a good thought. Parakeet, which is a very pretty, um, darker, limish green situation. Then we have Money Honey, which is another gold with a green undertone, but this one is definitely leaning a lot more green with like a gold undertone than the other way around. And last color in this palette is Cosmic Dust. Okay. So this is the last two rows and this is the first two rows. So as you can see, this is the full swatch of the Lick and Lash um, Playful Eyeshadow Palette. Like I said before, I've kind of given you guys my thoughts on all of the formulas. I will probably be coming back again with a roundup or just like a bought it, did I keep it or return it type situation to give you guys even more um, opinions on this particular palette. I just stole a little bit of my boiled peanuts. Uh, your girl is happy. Okay, one thing before I do those comparisons, I did not talk about, and I will have it linked up in the cards. I have already purchased and reviewed the Lick and Lash Sp Spice Palette, and this is what it looks like. This is the Spice Palette. This is the Playful Palette. As you can see, there is clearly a size difference, clearly a shape difference when it comes to the actual eyeshadow palette. Um, apparently this at this point when this brand did this they were private labeled not judging just saying and apparently now they are no longer private labeled I can see a difference I was not a huge fan of this formula I just really loved the color scheme that's why I purchased it that's why I said it was a good palette and you can work with this palette my biggest problem with this palette is all of the shades were just too monochromatic for my complexion for my skin so I was getting basically the same looks every time so that was not a huge plus for me i love this formula so hopefully they will stick to this formula and keep coming out with really good um color schemes because i will continue to purchase but i just just want to just let you guys know that and like i said i will have that um video linked up what i'm gonna do is at the very end of this video i'm gonna have comparison pictures um and yeah i think that's all i have for you guys today so as always y'all it has been real peace